Why does the media hate Jason Tatum? Jason Tatum may not be the flashiest player on the court, but the efforts he makes to push his team beyond the bar are commendable. But why does the media hate him? We will be finding an answer to that. Tatum doing it all. Kicks it out, gets it back. Oh, whoa, whoa. That is disgusting. 11 point Boston lead. Jason Tatum, the Boston Celtics outstanding small forward, has earned numerous all outstanding selections and all NBA team awards. Despite his accomplishments and importance to the Celtics, a loud subset of fans and media appear to despise his manner of celebrity. Unlike many NBA superstars, Tatum is not the most vocal or flashy player on the court. He does not have a high usage rate or consistently score more than 30 points every night. Instead, he sets the example, participating on both sides of the court and supplying what the game requires each night. The more silent, more balanced approach to fame may not always appeal to everyone. Some fans and media personalities prefer more showy, high-scoring athletes who make news for their outspoken personalities or spectacular performances. Tatum's more restrained and persistent excellence may not receive as much attention, resulting in underappreciation despite his tremendous performances and efforts on the court. Jason Tatum personifies the Boston Celtics' season-long commitment to sacrifice and collaboration, which has helped them reach the NBA Finals. Throughout the season, the Celtics have prioritized team success over individual honors, a mindset that has remained consistent even on the league's grandest stage. Tatum has been subjected to intense defensive pressure in the finals against the Dallas Mavericks, with multiple defenders closing in on him to stymie his scoring attempts. Tatum, on the other hand, has refrained from pressing shots in order to match Luka Doncic's offensive output. Instead, he has adopted an unselfish attitude focused on making the best play for his team. This selflessness demonstrates Tatum's maturity and commitment to the Celtics' championship dreams. His refusal to engage in a scoring duel, despite Jason Kidd's efforts to agitate him by praising Jalen Brown as Boston's best player, demonstrates his dedication to the team's concept. For the Celtics, the best player can change depending on the game, quarter, and even possession. This fluid hierarchy illustrates the squad's togetherness and adaptability, both of which are necessary for a championship team. Tatum's ability to set an example, emphasize defense, and make sound judgments under duress has been critical to Boston's success. His willingness to give up personal glory for the team's ultimate goal exemplifies the Celtics' collective ethos. In the end, who tops the scoring charts is irrelevant. What matters is that the team leaves the court victorious. Tatum's version of stardom may not always make headlines, but it helps the Celtics become champions. There's no denying Tatum's shot has been off in the first two NBA Finals games. He's made just four of his 14 three-point attempts and only 12 of his 38 total. Having between four and six arms attempting to knock the ball out or block your shot will do that to any person. But Tatum is excelling in almost every other element of his game, particularly as a facilitator. He's taking advantage of all the defensive focus by finding open teammates for easy baskets. On five different occasions on Sunday night, he found a cutting Drew Holiday for an easy bucket at the basket as the Celtics guard led the team with 26 points in the Game 2 victory. Several of Jason Tatum's thunderous drives on Sunday night during his latest Twitter trial resulted in the ball dribbling on the rim long enough to bounce off and into the hands of a Mavericks rebounder. His postseason performance has been inconsistent from both three-point and mid-range distances. When Tatum converted his only triple of Game 2 on a swing-swing-swing sequence late in the third, he nodded his head in relief rather than pride. He shot just 6 for 22 from the field and 1 for 7 from 3. Obviously, I need to shoot better, Tatum remarked. Golly! Tatum played a more facilitative role than Doncic in this game, as he did in Game 1 with 5 assists to Doncic's single setup. Tatum had 8 assists by halftime Sunday evening and finished with 18 points, 9 rebounds, and 12 assists. It wasn't like I had to do anything spectacular, Tatum stated. It was just about finding the open guy. Dallas has had him contort through crowds anytime he probes the paint, frequently thanks to Doncic's matador defense clearing a runway for Tatum or Brown to drive. Every time I take a couple dribbles, there's like three people right there, Tatum stated. When there are too many Mavericks following him, he responds by firing to open teammates. 
Coming into a game, it's kind of similar to a puzzle, and he's done a great job learning how to solve the puzzle and do different things, the Celtics head coach Joe Mazzulla stated. Tonight, with the way that they were rotating and the way that they were defending, the most important thing was to make the right play at the rim. Despite Tatum's multifaceted contributions, the media and fans have manufactured a virtual rivalry between him and Jalen Brown. This storyline frequently overshadows their complementary playing styles and the synergy they bring to the court. Tatum's softer manner and methodical approach contrast with Brown's more outspoken and explosive style, prompting some to set them against each other rather than recognizing their collaborative efforts. This competitive discourse fosters unwarranted speculation about team relationships and individual positions, frequently overlooking the larger picture of their collective goal, winning a championship. Tatum and Brown have both demonstrated a willingness to adjust and give up personal preferences in order to help the team succeed. The Celtics' ability to adjust who leads the charge depending on the game's needs demonstrates their roster's versatility. As the Celtics pursue an NBA championship, it is critical to honor Tatum and Brown's achievements while avoiding contentious narratives. Their collaboration and mutual support are critical to the team's success, and focusing on a perceived rivalry simply takes away from their shared accomplishments and the cohesive unit they've fought so hard to create. Well, it doesn't matter what people say or what the media shows or writes in the articles, but what matters is that both Tatum and Brown are playing in sync and cooperating with each other on the court. We can see such a bond between them during matches. I can recall a moment when Jason Tatum needed a boost in Game 3 after the Boston Celtics suffered a heartbreaking loss to Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Despite media scrutiny and rising pressure, a wonderful moment of solidarity developed. Jalen Brown, seeing Tatum's difficulty, placed a comforting hand on his shoulder and gave him a passionate pep talk. In a viral video, Brown can be heard encouraging Tatum, saying, Tell them to stop playing with you. I'm Big Deuce. I'm Big Deuce. Come on. This inspirational moment spurred Tatum, who replied with a game-high 33 points and 13 rebounds, propelling the Celtics to a 106-93 victory. Here we go. Come on, Big Deuce. Come on. Come to stop playing with you. I'm Big Deuce. I'm Big Deuce. Come on. Even though the news reporters keep posting bad stuff about him, he says that he respects them and accepts that sometimes it happens when he disagrees with that. But it's fine, and everyone has their opinion and a right to say. To you guys a job, I respect the guys on TV. Uh, I don't always agree with the things that they say, but, you know, when they're fair and like take emotion out of it, whatever way that they're playing to it, when they're fair, you know, you, I respect and you understand what uh, the media has brought to our game and more eyes and more attention, even how everybody has benefited from that. Uh, Despite his scoring concerns, Jason Tatum's all-around efforts have helped the Boston Celtics take a 2-0 lead over the Dallas Mavericks in the 2024 NBA Finals. Tatum has admitted that his shooting performance has been subpar, but he is committed to making an impact on the game in other ways. I'd want to get back some of those missed layups and open threes. The law of averages indicates they'll come back. But right now, my attention is on how I can dominate the game in other ways. My defense, passing, and rebounding, that's what I'm focused on," he remarked following Game 2. His desire to put team success over personal accomplishments has been clear. Instead of pressing shots to increase his scoring, Tatum has embraced his role as a facilitator and defender, which has greatly contributed to the Celtics' supremacy. This selfless mentality, particularly in high-pressure finals games, distinguishes Tatum from other top players who may acquire tunnel vision and concentrate entirely on scoring. Tatum's maturity is evident in his post-game remarks. I've been here before, and we didn't win, and it feels like we're so close to achieving our goals. Why would I let my ego or desire to score all the points stand in the way of that? His drive to make the correct basketball play, even if it means not being the leading scorer, indicates his commitment to the team's ultimate aim of winning the title. Despite his significant accomplishments, Tatum has received unfair criticism from both fans and the media. The media's narrative frequently focuses on traditional superstar numbers like scoring averages, ignoring the varied quality of Tatum's game. His modest leadership and team-first attitude are usually overlooked, with certain media outlets favoring more flamboyant or high-scoring players. 
Well, the media's focus on scoring and flashy plays results in a misleading image of Tatum, neglecting his essential contributions that go beyond the scoreboard. His emphasis on team success and ability to alter his game for the greater good reflect true leadership, earning him acclaim and respect rather than condemnation. So that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning into this as we have presented on the topic of why the media hates Jason Tatum. I guess you guys have your answer. As we move forward, we'll keep you updated with the latest videos on similar topics and ensure that you don't miss a thing from the NBA universe. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Share your thoughts in the comments section and hit the bell icon to stay notified. Until next time, this is Dot Hoops signing off.